Hi everybody, and welcome back to sketch to see In episode number nine of sketch to see I described the three main contracting documents that are involved in any yacht building process. Also in that episode, I mentioned that there's one document specifically that required its own episode. That document's the spec sheet or the specification sheet. So if you're curious, stay tuned. This episode's dedicated to the specification sheet. Why is this document so important that it deserved its own episode? That's a good question. Let me tell you why. Your specification sheet outlines all of your onboard systems. This is really important because when the manufacturer comes down to build your actual yacht, the people on the floor sometimes have a little bit of disconnect between the people in the main office. And they, everybody needs to know exactly where every piece of equipment goes. So it could be as simple as, this small bar fridge goes in this bar rather than downstairs in the galley to we specifically specified a faucet here and a different faucet in this room over here. That's why it's so important to nail down some of these details in this document. The main reason why this document deserves its own episode is because of its complexity. So this document, the specification sheet, can range anywhere from 50 to 150 pages long. No, I'm not exaggerating. I have seen different specification sheets that have been within this range. After all, it does have to identify every single element that goes into your yacht. The spec details how the hulls are being built, the different materials that the mast and boom are gonna be made from. This detail goes all the way down to a towel hook being fastened to the wall and what brand of toilet paper holders you want. In short, you don't want to leave any room for interpretation here. In order to be that specific in your specification sheet, you must have already agreed on your design brief. If you haven't already watched episode number seven, it's all about this design brief that I'm just mentioning now. I'll put a link to it here in the video. There are a couple of standard items that should be included in your specification sheet. The first few pages of your spec sheet should include the design brief, a basic preamble that outlines the way your yacht is going to be built, a couple examples of the GA, and some exterior renderings as well. In addition to those basic documents, it should also have a list of scheduled items that will be added as addendum to your spec sheet. Electrical drawings, heat management, exhaust, plumbing, sails and rigging, Pretty much everything has to be identified either as one of these scheduled attachments or exactly in the specification sheet. That preamble I just mentioned is a basic statement or a generalization that describes the mentality in which your yacht is going to be built. Our preamble reads, all materials and equipment supplied by the builder should be new, of good quality, suitable for marine use, and the material's intended purpose. All composite selections and manufacturers shall be listed where requested below, be processed by the builder, and have suitable properties to meet all the designed loads. All plywood should be of good quality and waterproof grade. Aluminum materials shall be 5083, 5086, or 6061 alloys free from defects. All stainless steel shall be AISI 316 for the hardware in the exterior areas and in the bilge, and AISI 304 for the hardware in the interior areas. Another reason for the complexity of this document is it takes quite a bit of back and forth in order to nail down the exact equipment that you are going to require to run your yacht. For example, you as the client have an expectation that the range of your vessel will be 1,000 nautical miles. Well, how would you calculate that? Now I know that I've detailed this in another episode, but here goes. First, you must specify the terms in which the range will be calculated under. The terms will go something like this. The range shall be 1,000 nautical miles at eight knots under motor with one generator running 50% of the time. This range is also dependent on your fuel tank size. So in order to properly calculate what you need included on your yacht to meet the specified range, you need to work through a few variables. You've specified your range 
and you know your displacement because your weight study has been done, so you can select what should be the appropriate size of your engines. You then need to select what you think are the proper size generators for your power requirements. You combine the fuel burn rates of the engines and the generators in order to work out how many liters per hour you will be consuming. Now that you know how many liters per hour you will be using, you need to know how many hours will be required to go your specified range. As noted before, I set 1,000 nautical miles at 8 knots. So 1,000 nautical miles divided by 8 knots equals 125 hours. Finally, you can calculate your tank size for your specified range. For this, you would multiply 125 hours by the combined fuel burn rate of your motors and generators according to your specification, and this will result in the required tank size to be included in your spec. This is a pretty important step because through this one calculation you're able to identify the engines, generators, and size of the fuel tanks required for your yacht, all of which need to be thoroughly detailed in your spec. Now I know all of this sounds a little bit complicated, but take comfort in knowing that you won't be doing this alone. You have the naval architect plus the team of engineers at the manufacturer's office to make sure that all these calculations are done correctly. You also need to size your water tanks using a very similar protocol. Estimate the largest amount of water you think you could potentially use in one day. Ask yourself how many hours a day are you willing to run your water makers? And then you need to ask yourself again, how much water can my water maker or makers make an hour? Another way to look at it is to consider how long you are willing to let it take for the water maker or water makers to refill your existing holding tanks. This is the route that we took. No matter which way you decide to go about this, note that changing one variable will mean that all of these calculations have to be done again. In this case, it's definitely better to be safe than sorry, or a measure twice and cut once approach. I know that I'm starting to sound a bit like a broken record, but I really can't stress enough how much every single little decision has a knock-on or a ripple effect throughout your entire build and eventually your future enjoyment of this yacht. Every single one of these details needs to be worked, reworked, documented, and shared, and revisited, and revisited once again in order to make sure that you are getting everything that you hope to out of this yacht. This is why it's easy for your spec sheet to get long quickly. It's important to note that your spec sheet kind of evolves as your yacht is coming together and is sometimes a little bit of a fluid discussion with your manufacturer and your naval architect. At each stage, you need to be as thorough as possible to make sure that something doesn't get forgotten or left behind at one of the previous stages. It's easy to make a quick decision about electrical and then move on to furniture, and then realize when you're trying to put in a bed, you now have a question about electrical and you've completely forgotten what it was. It's really important that you're able to refer back to why you made that decision beforehand just to sort out these details. Along with detailing all of your life support systems that I've just mentioned, your spec sheet will also detail all of the internal equipment, fixtures, hardware, and various other pieces that go on the inside of your vessel. This includes, but is not limited to, navigation equipment, joystick control, hardware, different port lights, electronic blinds, the list continues. TVs, speakers, towel hooks, sinks, different paint colors, even down to different fabrics, cushions, cushion shapes, foam densities. For example, we're choosing Kohler Devonshire series faucets in all en suites. We have been very careful to include the exact model number and finish so there's no misinterpretation and we make sure we get exactly what we're looking for. Now don't worry if you're unsure about an item at this stage. This will happen. You're not expected to know what fabric you want on your cushions the same week you decided to build the yacht. In this situation, you would specify something like this. All interior furniture is to be made out of sunbrella fabric or leather. Prior to finalizing or constructing any of the furniture, the manufacturer would require final sign off from the client. At least now you have an option. Like I said, the spec sheet can be 150 pages, so I definitely could keep going but I'm gonna stop here for now. I think it's become pretty clear why the spec sheet is so important. Each and every component of your yacht is compiled into this spec sheet, 
and it becomes the main tool of reference for you, the naval architect, and the manufacturer throughout the build. And while it does need to be detailed and specific, it does not need to be perfect the first time. As the vision for your yacht evolves, you can revisit some of these items and fine tune them until you and the manufacturer finally agree that each item is exactly as it should be. So to achieve a great spec, all you need is a little bit of research and a lot of patience. So thanks for tuning into this episode. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me as always at sketch to see at gmail.com. Follow along with some more up-to-date stuff and current information both on our Facebook and Instagram accounts. I'm gonna put those links right up here. Thanks again, hope to see you again soon.